idea I'm throwing out there because I think that there are too many, I mean, not there aren't too many artists, it's just there's a lot of artists. And, um, there, and with varying amounts of financial security or insecurity, and I think that it makes sense and there's strength in numbers. And then if you have more of these cells, as I like to call them, I like to make it sound radical, um, <laughs> then uh, they can co uh, collaborate together, they can, you know, they can do big things. I mean, the Artist Legacy Foundation has been doing some of that, right? The what? Artist Legacy Foundation. The Artist Legacy Foundation is premised on it being more than one artist. Right now, there's just Viola. I'm sure you know about the Western uh, case. Yeah. yeah, that would be a good example. Western, Western case, case. University. Yeah, there's, yeah they, and I've actually gone to it physically. It's an exhibition space and it's a warehouse. And over a period of time, I don't know if they're at the 20 year mark right now, but each year they take on like two or three artists. Um, they'll curate uh, a selection of maybe 20, 30 works, but the artist actually pays for that space over time. And so it becomes a place to research artists um, of, of that region. And uh, it was set up by a, a sculptor who loved the funds, and uh, they have a gallery and a curator. and staff, but um, so slowly over the years they've amassed, you know, I don't know if they're at 40 or 50 artists, but 50. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is regional. There's a group in the Bay Area of women who have, yeah, who have um, come together and also find themselves in a position at this stage where um, they, they have not had a lot of opportunities and support along the way, and so they've looked to them as a model. And, so they, um, they've gotten to the point of creating a website. So they have a website where their work is. Yeah, they, the group. Uh, sorry. I was in on that original meeting. Oh, okay. Here, yeah. So for those here. So it, it went that far. The idea was to do a publication. And then the issues of um, finding support. What's the name of the group, Jan? Uh, Bay Area Women's Art Legacy. Okay. Is that the name? Thank of you. Does that sound right? B A W L. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I have a <coughs> question because you're talking about the foundation, the legacy of specific artists. How about when there is a situation where it could be a collector or someone or a friend of artist who mm -hmm. collects mm -hmm. art? But it's not a billionaire collectors that can have his own million dollars foundation or, or museum or something that collects, you know, few artists and have built up. You know, how about this kind of a legacy foundation of, of sort of a yeah. collector friends of artists that have built up and not necessarily want to give yeah. away and a legacy that would be a legacy of that person, but. The artist also, it might be a few artists that may... You could mix them in. I don't see why you couldn't put have a collector in this mix, this group mix I'm talking about, yeah. especially if they had more money than the rest of everybody else and they wanted to do something, you know, for artists. Uh, yeah. Or, 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 or uh, give uh, money to a foundation for a named award or something. Sure. Yeah. That also sounds like something that is related to archives. And if you consider your archive, not just your artwork, but all of the material that's related to your artwork, your correspondence, your mm -hmm. exhibition files, all of the ephemera, and if you are a collector who has had a relationship with multiple artists, then you have a very diverse set of archives. Mm -hmm. And that puts you in a whole new context. So your archive, your related materials can recontextualize your work and bring in a whole new audience. And if you make your archive accessible as a reference point, then you can bring in people who had nothing, knew nothing about you before because you're, related, you're putting yourself in the context of a time, <coughs> of a place, of other artists, of teachers, of students. If you can get your archive processed on the Online Archive of California, then that gets you to a different place because you're bringing in a whole new group of people that you may not have thought of before and maybe not artists. You're thinking of your collection maybe in a different surrounding. We were talking about that this morning with Sharon, but the surrounding material should not be forgotten because that's also something that will definitely have to be maintained and dealt with and in the Demon Corn Foundation in particular, we have found it to be 
a tremendous resource to creating further research and then promoting his legacy from that. Well, that's interesting. interesting. The concept of the archives, which are not necessarily the artwork. If yeah. I were to compare in, in my case, for instance, very quickly, where I don't fit in any boxes because it's an unknown, <coughs> not very famous, <coughs> recognized in the world of art and from the supply side, as some of you come. So I do have, in many decades, relationships that I've had from now some famous or less famous artists that I traded or I worked with and we had that. So I have those, some piece of artwork, but also stories, you know, the material they use and the wow mm -hmm. and, and the collaboration. It's and invaluable. and some, somewhere I want to, the future, keep something that I don't know but how, so when, and where. Yeah, so as, as this whole generation of artists um, matures and is reaching um, these kinds of considerations, our collectors are aging as well. And I think for many of us, we're getting calls from collectors we haven't had contact with for 30 years. And they're saying, you know, I'm downsizing, my kids don't want the work, what should I do? And, and this, is, this is an issue for collectors. They, they're going to their children first. The children do not want the collections. They are not necessarily a collection that a museum would take altogether. And it does and they raise... They call us appraisers and say, can yes. you tell us what this is for? A, a, exactly. And, and this just brings up... The, I mean, they're, 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 they're facing the exact same issues. Of what do we do? How much do we? Um, are we able to retain some sense of, you know, the integrity of a collection? It has meaning. It, you know, people collect in different areas with a different focus. Um, and historically, there have also these small collections are often very, very important. So, um, how does anyone have experience with contacting? Um, University museums, smaller um, local museums. Yeah, but you, but you want to forest aids. Yeah, I think that that's a real lost, you know, missing opportunity. And I'm I'm creating a, a list of what I think are the good ones in the Midwest because I come from the Midwest. And um, yeah, I think it's a brilliant idea. <coughs> and universities are a really good suggestion. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. You had you had a. Um, I'm less of a mid-career artist than Squeak, but we're friends, and I am an <laughs> um, And I just want to give some advice. I went on my website to see where I am. Um, but what I realized when I was first asked to give archives, not paid to give my archives, but my, I do have archives, uh, I found that you could duplicate your archives, and I didn't know that <coughs> because the first place my archives went to was the Miriam Shapiro Archives on Women Artists at Rutgers, mm -hmm. which is a really strong archival, you know, <coughs> came out of the library and I was asked to do it and I did it. And they had my archives up until 2000. And then um, I was asked to donate archives to the Art Environment Center in Nevada. And I freaked because, oh no, I already gave my archives and then I found out that you can have duplicate archives. Mm -hmm. And I think that's nice to know. I didn't know that until I had this situation. Uh, so I'm just sharing that with you. And then, of course, American, the Smithsonian Archives of American Art. Is great. Well, don't, sh it's good to be in there. What are you shaking I, your head? No, 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 I, 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 shake, I shake my head because there's so, many, so much stuff sits languishing because they don't have any money either. Well, it doesn't I mean, matter. If it's they it's interview observed. you, it's, it's there. It's yeah. documented. I mean, it's Jan, yeah. Jan just I, gave I, a whole I, bunch I just, of work to them. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just wanted to say that I had a conversation with a museum curator a number of years ago as I was about to send my work to the Archives of American Art, my sketchbooks. And the question was, um, you know, do I send all of them there? Do I have them in different locations? Um, how, do, I, do, I, do I take some of these drawings out? I've been cutting drawings out of my notebooks, out of my sketchbooks, and selling them off to support myself because it was a very easy thing to sell. Um, and, and so all these questions came out, and his advice had been, not to have everything sitting in one place to begin with. So I also have multiple archives. Yeah, I, have, and I never knew that you could. But, it, but, but about the Smithsonian, mine was just an interview for them. I didn't give them any pieces. I didn't even know that the Smithsonian Oh, yeah, they, they take papers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, they do. They do. Oh, they'll, they'll come to your, mine was just an interview. They'll come to your studio, <laughs> and they'll look through your things, so they'll say yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, so the, the um, 
National Museum of Women and the Arts um, has a library. And so very early when they first found it, I, don't, I think they've sort of closed down now because of funding, they don't have money to continue and expand. But all my you know, paper archives went in there. And also because I went to um, school in London, my, I with the um, British Library, so the National Archives there. So, but it's a good idea to get everything in different places. Um, just as, and I'm gonna, this is like, has nothing to do with archive, but just because uh, for all of us who live in California or anywhere where there's weather, fires, yeah. mudslides, um, this was recommended by, by Tracy Friedman at a panel that I just had a symposium um, a couple of weeks ago. Just get all that work documented on a series of flash drives and mail them to people in different cities. Wow. Very simple thing. Good thing. I'm sorry. Yeah. Really simple thing. Yeah. Buy yourself 10 flash drives. Get all your work copied and get it sent out. Good. Yeah. Well, thank you. Oh, wait. Mm -hmm. just we have to close. Anyone has uh, any uh, comments or insights about how long an artist legacy is supposed to last? Uh, I'm, I'm, the, uh, I'm the director of a university museum at Squeak. We just got one of your paintings. Oh, yay! Yeah. Yeah. What's your museum? It's the Weissman, Frederick Weissman. Oh, Congratulations. Oh, thanks. That's Are you writing it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm also uh, a volunteer board member for the Claire Falkenstein oh, yeah. Foundation. You guys do amazing work with well, all well, volunteers. <laughs> yes. I'm about to throw up my hand. Um, well, it's a lot. Well, we, we do. And just in, in a nutshell, you know, when Claire passed away, Claire saved everything. And so there was, she had her house studio, another house that was filled with art for seven decades. Wow. And so, and this was before me, but the houses were sold. Money, some money went to relatives. There was enough left to go into a fund. And the income we pull off of that pays for the storage. Wow. For the art. Now, storing sculpture, particularly big sculpture, is an example. So, and then what we've been doing is that we've been trying to sell work to raise funds to do things. So we had a checklist, like publish a monograph. We did that. Uh, we just organized a, a big travel and show that went to the Crocker, oh, wow. Pasadena Museum of California Art, I think a couple of other places. You know, but one the thing that we face is that money's going to run out. Yeah. Yes. And right. what do we do? And we're all art historians. <clears throat> we don't want to throw the art out. We no. know that it's too valuable. Mm -hmm. um, and we're kind of on a dilemma. Does anyone have any insights? Like, how long is the Viola Fry or the... Well, Elizabeth there's still, there's a lot of work. There's a lot of material, so. Well, How long is it going to last? I think the foundation. You know, today, Andrea, we made, you know, the Richard Devencorn Foundation will.